we have a major update on the Montreal Canadiens trade plans for the trade deadline, as well as the Boston Bruins have been linked to one of the top trade deadline targets in Noah Hannafin. And I'll break it all down for you coming up on this episode of Hatrick HQ. But before we get into it, just want to say if you're one of the thousands of people watching this that aren't subscribed, make sure to go down below and hit that subscribe button because we'll be here every day bringing you daily NHL content, whether it's rumors, reports, everything that's happened around the league. This is your home for it, so you're not going to want to miss it. So make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button. But with that said, let's go right into the topic of the first topic of the video today, which is Hannafin linked to the Bruins. And as we take a look here, uh, they say the perennial contending Boston Bruins are said to be actively interested in Flames defenseman Noah Hannafin. Talks between the two franchises regarding the Boston College alumni have been ongoing throughout the season, as reported by Jimmy Murphy at Boston Hockey Now. And as we take a look here, it says, amidst confirmation of Hannafin's willingness to resign in Calgary, the prolonged wait for Noah's decision has left fans and media in the dark. Many believe he wants to sign in the U.S. somewhere long term. The Bruins have liked Hannafin dating back to his draft year. And as we take a look at you know, something that some players that may be traded here to bring Hannafin in, uh, it says, in a potential exchange, the Flames could offer up uh, Matt Grizzlick and Matt, Matt Portois um, and Georgie uh, Merkulov. Sorry if I pronounced that one wrong. He says, from the Bruins, notably Portois aligns with the Flames' trade strategy, fitting their desire to acquire players and picks. Despite concerns, concerns about his health, Portois possesses the immediate potential to contribute positively to the Flames if acquired. As the trade deadline approaches, the Flames face crucial decisions regarding Hannafin's future and potential additions to strengthen their roster. And obviously what they're talking about here is the situation where uh, just a couple of seasons ago, they lost Johnny Gaudreau, lost Matthew Kachuk for nothing. And as we see now, they traded off Lindholm, they traded off uh, Zadorov, and they're trading off their expiring guys here so that they can get some uh, capital back for these guys and not lose them for nothing come free agency. And it seems like this is what they're doing here with Noah Hannafin. And I think ba the Boston Bruins are a perfect fit for this guy. I think... You know, you bring this guy in, he's a great two-way defenseman. He can, can he can distribute the puck up the ice, but he's great via outlet passes. He's also a solid skater as well. Great defensively in his own zone. Uh, blocking shots can lay the body at times. And I think he fits this Boston Bruins system perfectly. So if you ship out Grizzly here in this situation, you could put Noah Hannafin up on that top pairing with Charlie McAvoy. Uh, or you could even move Hanfis Lindholm up to that top line with McAvoy. Leave uh, Hannafin here on the second pairing with Brandon Carlo. Really spark some offense uh, throughout the, the defensive pairings here. He can, He's a guy who can get on the score sheet for you with assists. He can shoot, He's not afraid to shoot the puck from the blue line uh, as well. He, he's great at that part of the game. And I think uh, this is a great trade for the Boston Bruins. Obviously, it may seem like if you're a Boston Bruin, Bruins fan, you're giving up a lot here in a guy who like Matt Pertois, who's came in this year and, and just had a great season. But he is a young prospect, and the Boston Bruins are in win-now mode. They are... Uh, you know, one of the favorites to maybe win the Stanley Cup this season. So you could trade out your young guys, ship them off to Calgary, uh, or a couple of young guys here in Grizzly and Portois uh, to Calgary, and you know, bring in Hannafin, really bolster this defensive core going into the playoffs, really try to solidify yourselves as Stanley Cup contenders coming out of the trade deadline and into the latter half of the season. And Calgary gets uh, a young guy here in Portois, a uh, great defenseman in Grizzly that they can kind of replace. Uh, uh, maybe a Tanev, maybe a Zadorov that they've traded, and I think that he could easily become top pairing defenseman in Calgary. It seems like this Calgary team is really retooling here, bringing in some young guys, bringing in some capital that they can trade off to try to salvage the core they have right now this offseason. And I really do think this would be a smart move for, for Calgary and a smart move for Boston. You're bringing in a local guy, uh, pretty sure a hometown guy here who grew up in the area and he played his um, junior career or in uh, Boston College. And I think this is, could be a great trade here for the Boston Bruins. I think this uh, could really bolster this team's defense, like I've said here previously in this video, and really help this team win a Stanley Cup. I really think this guy's a great defenseman. I think he's the best defenseman on the market right now, in my opinion. And I think there's going to be a lot of teams after this guy. And I think the Boston Bruins may be his number one landing spot. Going home, he can sign a, a, a lengthy extension here, maybe play the last years of his career here in Boston. I think this would be a great story. I think this team has some, some great potential here to win the Stanley 
Stanley Cup this year, and just adding one more piece could really, you know, bol uh, really push them forward, get them over that hump into being the Stanley Cup favorites. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. Let me know down below, what are your thoughts on this trade? Do you think the Boston Bruins should fire off an offer here to Hannafin, try to bring this guy in, or do you think maybe he goes somewhere else? Let me know down below. We're going to get into the second top of the video here which is major David Savard trade update. And as we take a look here, um, this is if he says, uh, while GM Kent, Kent Hughes isn't shopping David Savard or trying to trade the defenseman, he is fielding uh, trade deadline calls. As it stands, most teams who like Savard also stay, are staying involved in the Chris Tanev sweepstakes. That means Savard's uh, move isn't likely until those those teams know they aren't in on Tanev. And as we take a look here, this is from Arpen uh, Basu from The Athletic. He says, just like the trade of Elias Lindholm from Calgary to Vancouver created a market crunch for Monaghan that Hughes was unable to leverage. Once Calgary trades trades the right-handed shot defenseman, shot blocking Chris Tanev, a similar situation could be created for Savard. As a defenseman who fits that same profile, only one team can trade for Tanev, and the ones that don't get him will surely double back with the Canadians, just like the Jets did once they were unable to land Lindholm. And as we take a look here, he also says, they add it's unclear if the Canadians have spoken to Savard about this, about this plan, but they're listening to offers and had a similar conversation with Joel Edmondson last season when he was traded um, Kind of a similar situation where he had some uh, years remaining on his contract. Montreal retained some salary and they got some picks back for this guy. Uh, they say Hughes is the kind of GM who likes to know his players are hearing things from him and not online. And I think that is just uh, such a class act from, um, uh, from Kent Hughes that he, he uh, can... Go talk to his players and tell them that, you know, we're looking at trading you. He wants to give them a heads up just so they don't see it on Twitter. They don't see it on their social media that they're linked in rumors here. I think that's just a class act move from uh, Kent Hughes. But I think this situation is really interesting here for Montreal. And it really does make sense the way Arpen Basu explains it here. We've seen with Lindholm, once he was off the table when, and the Jets were in on this guy, they said, hey, Who's a similar player we can get that plays like Lindholm? And that is Sean Monaghan, which they then went after him and brought him into Winnipeg. And this is a situation we could see, like he says, with David Savard. Once Tanev is off the board, this guy's a similar type player. They play the same game. Uh, and maybe we could see a team that loses out on him, maybe falling back and trying to get a guy in David Savard. He does have some term here. So that is great news uh, for any team acquiring him. He, his contract is $3.5 million, I believe, for this season and next season. So maybe we may see a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, if they don't land our guy in Chris Tanev, maybe they fall back on David Savard here, ship off a third-round pick, uh, maybe a prospect to bring this guy in uh, and really, you know, bolster their decor for this upcoming draft. And as we take a look at David Savard's stats, obviously this guy's a season vet here in the, in the NHL. So far, this season has played 33 games with 8 points, 97 blocks, 42 hits. I mean, this guy is a great penalty killer. He's great on the special teams, and uh, I really do think that he could help any contending team, uh, you know, bolster their defense for this Stanley Cup playoff run that is, is slowly creeping upon us. We will soon be there. We will soon be playing playoff hockey, and I can't wait to watch it. But Back to Savard, I do think that this guy is a great defenseman. As a Montreal Canadiens fan, I have watched this guy uh, during his time in Montreal, and I really do like the way he plays. He's, you know, a big physical, big presence back on the blue line. He's a guy who's going to shut down top six forwards from time to time. Most of the time, really, and uh, really, you know, he's a great defenseman, a great stay-at-home defenseman here, uh, great penalty killer. I think, uh, you know, most nights he's averaging about three minutes uh, ice time on, on the penalty kill, which is a crazy stat in itself, but it does work. He's a great penalty killer. He can dump the puck out of his zone, shut down uh, top offenses in the NHL, and I really do think he's a great addition for any Stanley Cup contending team looking to add a defenseman here at the deadline. 
line. And I really do think we will see Savard shipped out here, unfortunately. As much as I love watching this guy in the Montreal Canadiens uniform, uh, I mean, it, you know, he has to go here. Montreal is revealing. He's a little bit of an older guy, like maybe aging out of the league now in a few years' time, which sucks to say. But, uh, you know, it is the reality of the game. And he, you know, can go get his Stanley Cup here uh, with one of these contending teams at a, a bit of a lower price than a guy like Chris Tanev, in my opinion. I think, you know, he's 3.5 million. I think he's worth every bit of that. And I think, you know, having him this year and having him locked up for next year is a big thing too. Landing a guy with term here, you don't need to worry about signing him in free agency. He's still going to be on your roster next year and you can go worry about bringing some other guys in. I really do think this is a great option for any contending team here. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. What do you think about a potential David Savard trade here? And what do you think? Do you think that uh, this is a great idea that that we've seen here uh, from Arpan Basu that, you know, once the top guy goes, maybe there's a foul guy like Sean Monaghan, like David Savard. I really like this logic of thinking from Arpan Basu. Really got my mind reeling today. I'm sure it's getting your guys' mind reeling now. But we're going to get into everybody's favorite topic here. And that is comment of the day. And the comment of the day today goes to our boy Daniel. Shout out to you, Daniel. Day one supporter here on the channel. We love seeing you down in the comment section all the time. Really appreciate all your love and support here on the channel. He says, great video, KC. I'm sticking with no more rental players. Loving the way Easton Cowan is playing. Great pick for us. Go Leafs, go. Shout out to you, Daniel. Like I said, really appreciate all your love and support uh, from uh, to us from here on the channel. And uh, like you said, I do think getting a player with term here is going to be a great option for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think it makes the most sense in, in, in my eyes. And maybe we take see him take a look at David Savard here. Has one more year left on his deal. Could really help this Montreal or this uh, Toronto Maple Leafs team uh, with their playoff run. And, and I'm really excited uh, to see what the Toronto Maple Leafs do here at the deadline. It's going to be fun uh, fun times to watch and in regards to Easton Cowan love that guy he's gr having a great season uh, in the OHL this year and he's going to light it up with the Leafs next year I'm sure of it but if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to go down below hit that like button hit that subscribe button on the road for 3,000 subscribers here so if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure to go down below hit that subscribe button and if you enjoy the NHL make sure to check out this video it's popping up on your screen right now but as always I'm your host KC keep your stick on the ice